Well, in big news coming uh, from the Supreme Court, uh, the Supreme Court has struck down SPI's plea seeking an extension of the deadline to submit details of the electoral bonds. And joining me now is uh, ADR's Jagdeep Chopper, who is one of the petitioners, uh, you know, asking Supreme Court to, to instruct SPI. In fact, he'd filed a contempt of court against the SBI. We'll get more details from him directly. Sir, first of all, thank you so much for joining us and many congratulations once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if you could just explain what the Supreme Court said uh, to our viewers, because the SE did say that you don't have to match the details, which is what uh, the, uh, the SBI had said, that they need more time to do. So what does this really mean? See, the Supreme Court originally had not asked SBI to match. Supreme Court had said that you give information about who has purchased each bond and how much amount and on what date. And that they should give details of who has redeemed that bond for how much amount and on what date. Now, Elect the, the State Bank of India decided to produce this or introduce this red herring of matching, which they thought will, uh, you know, they might hoodwink the Supreme Court into giving them three months' time uh, for whatever reason they thought three, four months was a good idea to ask for. But Supreme Court had not asked them to do that. They say the information is available in two silos. A lot of people have been saying in the last three, four days that let them release the information in two silos. We will marry the two silos. But they were obviously they were not wanting to disclose the information. I had also written about it that the reasons given by the Supreme Court were rather amateurish. And for them to expect that the Supreme Court will be fooled by these reasons was uh, again uh, not very. Uh, not very bright, I should say. And therefore, uh, as expected, the Supreme Court saw through the, the, the shallowness of those reasons. And Supreme Court actually seems to have come down very heavily because they have said that you give this information by the end of business tomorrow. And they have also gone on record that we would like to put the State Bank of India on notice that if they do not do it by tomorrow, they might be charged with contempt of court. The court has actually said this, which is very significant. And uh, they put it up tomorrow. And then the court has asked the Election Commission of India to put it on their website by the 15th, which is just three days after that. So I think the Supreme Court's order is, uh, is, is very good. It actually carries the spirit of the judgment of the Supreme Court on February 15th. The State Bank of India had tried to sort of uh, undermine or delay the, the implementation of the judgment. And as I had written in some piece that I wrote, that delay is the deadliest form of denial. So the Supreme Court saw that and they said, no delay will be accepted and you better do it by tomorrow. As a matter of fact, the Supreme Court lawyer said that we will be able to give this information in two silos in three weeks. Right. But the Supreme Court said, no, you give it by tomorrow, which is absolutely fair. I think it is a very fair judgment and uh, uh, it upholds the rule of law. And that is why it is uh, useful. Right. Uh, in an earlier conversation I had with Mr. Subhashkar, he was the economic affairs uh, secretary at the time the uh, scheme was used. He also said that, you know, the, the details that the Supreme Court asked for, those are six, uh, six key details, are readily available. And figuratively, he said it takes about 10 minutes to put it together. Your petition also echoes a similar sentiment that it takes a few yeah, hours. Yeah. At uh, so do you think that the SBI has the details, they're sitting on it, but they did not deliberately give it as uh, was expected of them? Of course they have it. There's no question. The scheme requires them to have it. And they have given affidavits during the course of the hearings on the case that they have it. They cannot go back and deny all that. That is why their application has not been accepted. Right. 
um there's another factor here uh, that you know the matching that they were seeking time for uh, mr gaik had said that it's not possible even in 3 months in 3 3 and a half months extension they'd ask for because that's a very lengthy process now uh, what can we uh, establish uh, from the information that we will get hopefully from sbi over the next few days uh, just for the layman's understanding can we at the end of tomorrow understand or when the uh, eci puts it up on the website on 15th of march no which donor gave how much money to which party will that information have finally be made public uh it yes the answer to your question is yes it will be made public even if it is not directly revealed in the information that the sbi gives to eci and eci puts it up on its website it will be uh, made available to the public by a whole lot of uh, people who analyze this kind of information who are it savvy uh, as a matter of fact several people have written in the last 3 4 days that the state bank should give us information of both silos and we will marry them together so that can be done this uh, i respectfully disagree with mr gurg that it cannot be done in 3 months and 6 months and maybe it can never be done it will be done in at the most couple of days i can assure you that right uh, now i want to ask you about the motives of sbi because as an institution they ideally shouldn't have any reasons to deliberately delay if they have the information uh, again uh, going back to mr gurg uh, he said that probably they were doing this at the behest of the union government uh do you share that sentiment do you think this was a tactic to uh, make this information public till uh, after elections at least i have no information on sbi's motives and i will not speculate what those motives were mr gurg having been in the government may know what the government may have wanted and what the what motivated the sbi i will not come i have no information on the motives um uh, another if i could ask you a hypothetical question but uh, you know this information that hopefully will be made public on 15th of march now what does it mean uh, you know for the public to know how the the you know the donations came to political parties over the last few years what does it actually mean well it means that either on the 15th of march or very soon thereafter the public at large will know which company or which business house or which individual gave how much money to which political party on which date this will be available to the public now it will be for the public to decide whether those donations were linked with some action that the government took to assist or to help that that company or that individual <clears throat> that public will have to decide for their own but public will have access to this information as to who has given how much money to which political party and when so this another argument and i'm just playing the devil's advocate here uh, that you know the companies when they donated this money they had done so uh, you know because there was a law of the land which said that you will be given complete anonymity when you donate uh, so you know there is one sentiment that the companies might feel betrayed now that they uh, they were ensured their anonymity and now it will all be out in the public uh, what do you have to say about that well any company or any individual who feel betrayed they have the option to go to the supreme court and no one's done that yet well i no, i am not aware of anyone having done that right so sentiments are all right there are all kinds of sentiments but if there is anybody who is genuinely uh, feel aggrieved the option of the judicial action exists let them go to the court and say their judgment violates my fundamental right to privacy right and we will see uh, what the judgment says and the other fear is that you know uh, companies that have perhaps donated to opposition parties might now face the wrath of the government is is that also something that we could see happening no no i don't know what will happen but anybody who has given money to any political party that information will be known now how that information is used by whom is an open issue the political the opposition political parties will have access to information what the party in power has got and party in power will have the information what the opposition parties have got so it would be an open field it will not be 
that uh, one party has all the information and the others do not. So that uneven playing field, which the Supreme Court in their order had very clearly commented upon unambiguously, so the playing field will now be level. There's another party thing that need to do what they want. By joining the dots, perhaps now we can also understand if there was any quid pro quo, uh, you know, companies giving a donation at a certain date, at a certain time uh, to a certain party that is in power and getting certain benefits out of it in terms of policy, contracts and all of that. That also is something that will be known after the publishing of the data, right? Please, please join the dots. I will encourage you to do that and I will encourage everybody to do that, to join the dots and see what was the reason behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, one last question before I let you go. Now, what does this mean uh, in terms of making the political uh, funding in India transparent? Is, this is definitely a step. What is next? What can we want to make sure that there's more transparency? There are some other uh, rules and laws where, you know, donations in cash less than 2,000 rupees need not be disclosed. Their source need not be disclosed. That should also be done away with. All donations to political parties should be transparently done. That is what is required. And right. political parties have to be financially transparent in the sense, how do they get the money? Where do they get the money? When do they get their money? Whom they get it from? And how do they spend their money? How, do, uh, how much do they spend? When do they spend? These things should be in the public domain. Political parties work in, they say they work in the public sphere, they work for public good. Janta ki seva karte hain. To wo jo unke lavarti hain, unki seva ke, they should at least be willing to tell them that uh, for doing service to the public, where do they get their money from? Right. Right. Uh, well, uh, we'll see if the data does come and we'll keep a close track of it. I thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, a fantastic I, judgment. I assure you the data will come. Please do not say we will see if the data comes. The data will come. When the data comes. Right. But <laughs> data will come on the 15th of March. Right, right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs>